In this video, we're going to look at how to design a function that operates on what we call two complex data. So that would be a function that consumes two lists, for example, or maybe a list and a tree, two data that both involve a one of in their type comment. In order to do that, we're going to use a resource which is available to us on the templates page. If we go to the website and we go to the templates page, and then we scroll down we can select functions operating on two complex data. And this is the part of the recipe that we're going to be using as we work through this example. Let's jump now to the example and then I'll introduce the steps of the recipe as we go. So here's the example we want to work with. We're asked to design a function that consumes two lists of strings and produces true if the first list is a prefix of the second. In other words, the first list matches one for one the beginning of the second list. And what we've got here is a data definition for list of string. And what I've done here, because it's going to save us space a little bit later in this design, is I've just abbreviated the type name to LOS instead of list of string. But aside from a different type name, this is just an ordinary list of string definition. Although all I have is the type comment, the interpretation, and the examples. I haven't put the template in here yet. Okay, here we go. Let's get started on this function. Well, like any other function, the first thing we can do is write a signature. But this, of course, is a function that consumes two arguments. It consumes two LOS, two list of strings, and it needs to produce true or false, depending on whether one is a prefix of the other. So we'll have it produce Boolean. And what we're going to do is, let's assume We'll do the stub first so we can give names to the parameters. We'll say define prefix equal question mark list one and list two. This is the stub. And now we can write the purpose more succinctly. We'll say produce true if list one is a prefix of list two, false otherwise. So there we go. So far we've just followed the ordinary HTDF recipe for a function. We've got the signature, we've got the purpose, and we've got a stub. But this is a function operating on two complex data. It consumes two data, LOS and LOS, both of which involve a one of in their type comment. So for the next step we're going to do something that we haven't done before. We're going to produce something called a cross product of type comments table. So here we go. I'm going to insert a comment box and this thing we're going to produce is called a cross product of type comment table. Now what does that mean? That's quite a mouthful. Well it means this. We know just how we designed the function if it consumed a single list of string because we know what type it consumes and we know how to get a template. So let's just for a minute focus on the first parameter to the function. LST, LST1. Now if we look at the type comment, there's two cases for LST1. Right? So let's put those two cases in here in this table. There's the first one, and there's the second one. Those are the two cases for LST1. Okay, now Let's look at the cases for LST2. We'll put LST2 across the top of the table like this. Well, what are the two cases for LST2? Well, LST2 can be empty. That's this case. Or LST2 itself can be cons string LOS. Those are the two cases for LST2. And now we're seeing what this cross product table does for us. It tells us that there's two cases for LST1 and two cases for LST2. So really what's going on here is there's four combined cases. There's the case where they're both empty. The case where LST1 is empty but LST2 is a cons the case where LST1 is a cons but LST2 is empty and the case where they're both conses. There's really four different cases that the data for this function can be. 
So with that insight that there's four cases involved, let's keep going. Let's start generating check expects with that insight in mind. Clearly the simplest case is this one, so let's start with that. Check expect prefix prefix equal question mark empty and empty. Well let's see. In that case everything that's in list one, which is to say nothing, is at the beginning of list two. So in that case, pre list one is a prefix of list two, so this is true. This may seem non-intuitive. It's a little bit like the case where we asked whether all the numbers in an empty list were positive. They are. Every single number in an empty list is positive. There just aren't any of them. And here, every single element in empty is at the beginning of this list. It's just that there aren't any of them. So that's this case here, and we might want to go up here right now and just and just type the answer right here in the table. Okay, let's do this case next, where list one is empty, but list two is a cons. So list one is going to be empty, and now we're going to start using list notation. So we'll just say that this is list A, B, for example. Now let's see. Is everything in empty found at the beginning of list A, B? Yeah, there's nothing in empty, so all of it is found at the beginning of list A, B. So this is also true. So that's this case here. Now let's do this case here. Let's see. In this case, let's get it set up first. Check, expect, prefix equal question mark. In this case, list 1 has something in it. Let's say it's list A, but list 2 is empty. Empty. So what's the result there? Well, is everything in list 1, which is to say A, at the beginning of list 2? No, it's not. So list 1 is not a prefix of list 2. So this case is false. And we can put false here. So now we've used our cross product of type comments table to get clear in our mind that there's really four kinds of cases. And we've done three of them. Now the more, most general case is left. So let's start on that case. Let's see. We'll say check expect prefix equal question mark. Well, let's start with an easy case. Is list A at the beginning of list B? Well, no, it's not. So that's false. Let's see if is let's ask if list A is at the beginning of list A. That's true. And now let's do two longer cases. Check expect prefix equal list A B is that at the beginning of list A X? Well, no, it's not, so that's false. And we'll check, expect another too long case. Is list A B at the beginning of list A B? And there it is. That's true. And looking at that, we can start to understand what's going on here. In order for a list to be a prefix of, in order for list 1 to be a prefix of list 2, then the first element of list 1 has to match the first element of list 2, and the rest of list 1 has to be a prefix of list 2. 
That's why in this case it's false, because the first element matches, but the second doesn't. Whereas in this case it's true, the first element matches, but then the rest of this list, which is list B, is a prefix of the rest of this list, which is list B. So what we might do here is just put a little note, something like, and the firsts are string equal, and that, and the rests are prefix equal. So what we've done so far is we were asked to design a function operating on two complex data. In this case, both arguments are list of string. And we started by making the signature and the purpose the usual way, and the template the usual way. But because we knew that this was a function operating on two complex data, and what we did was we formed the cross product of type comments table by putting different cases of the one of for the first parameter here, and different cases of the one of for the second parameter here, again scrolling the type comment onto the, onto the screen, we've got the different cases of the one of for the first parameter here, those two cases, and different cases of the one of for the second parameter, those two cases here. In this example, both parameters have the same type. But that doesn't have to be the case. We'll see some other examples later where we do a cross product of type comments table, but the two types are different. But at any rate, we formed this cross product and that made it clear to us that there were four categories of cases. We used that to help generate the tests. And as we formed the tests, we took some notes back in here about what the results were. And in some cases, the results are quite simple, like always true or always false. And in other cases, there's some more work involved. So that's the design of a function operating on two complex data up through forming the cross product of type comments table and the check expects. Next time, we'll look at how to code the actual function based on the cross product of type comments table.